We are nowhere near in terms of reducing emissions. The recent UNEP report made it very clear that we have to reduce emissions at the rate of 7% every year for the next 10 years. Only then we'll be able to keep the temperature levels below 1.5. Otherwise, we are going to face devastating climate impacts. The reality is that the global south is already facing climate emergencies. They are facing increasing number of cyclones, drought and rising seas. And they need to be supported now as we speak. And that's one of the key issues on the table at COP25 in Madrid. The financing facility needs to be established. We cannot delay this anymore. And we have seen how bullying by rich countries hasn't allowed any progress to happen in the last six years. So between now and COP26, we need to make sure that there is ambition as per science and equity. And we also have option to support developing countries who are facing climate emergency in terms of loss and damage financing facility. So what we need between now and COP26 is more climate ambition, more climate action. We know that the NDCs collectively together bring us on a path for 3.2 degrees warming. That means climate catastrophe. So we need more ambitious targets and we need to actually have the system to operationalize this and have climate action to reach those targets. One important aspect of the Paris Agreement now is to establish the final rules for the carbon markets after 2020. And it's the last outstanding piece that, misses, uh, that is missing from the Paris rulebook. At the moment, we're seeing massive loopholes that are threatening to undermine the climate action at the time when we know we need more climate action. So we need to close the loop, those loopholes. We need to avoid double counting. We need to avoid old credits. And we need to make sure we set up carbon markets that work for people, work for the planet, work for the environment, and truly reduce emissions. Well, you know, this COP is happening already in the midst of an acceleration of impacts all over the world. And what we need to see is an acceleration of actions and scaling up of support you know, to make this happen. So, you know, we want to demonstrate progress and resolve that, you know, in COP26 next year, five years after Paris, uh, what will come to the table, the national nationally determined contributions are going to demonstrate progress toward the Paris Agreement goal to really stand a chance you know to live in a decent world uh, that's and to make this happen there's a number of issues that are being discussed here where we want to see progress but not at all costs we want to make the right decisions and the, the worldwide is very important because we see this COP has is happening in the midst of a lot of social protests because and, and, and what countries, delegates need to think about is to make sure that some of the decisions to accelerate do not have unintended consequences, uh, but, but rather really is pure ambition and do it in a fair manner and an inclusive and participatory manner. Um, so, you know, there are the saying, you can go fast alone. It's about going far together. And this is really, you know, what we need to be guided, you know, for. So we want to see progress and, and, and I think we can make it, especially if we keep the kind of spirit of this COP. I think that uh, I tend to believe more in actions. So I would like to see the governments, the conference of parties here, uh, getting their commitments on track and supporting local level implementation and then they can report when in, in the next COP the progress on that. I think we've gone past the time of discussions and negotiations. Action is needed right now and, and therefore whatever commitments that the Conference of Parties agreed upon in Paris, let the talking, walking the talk start now. Such, by, such that by COP26, we have some progress. Well, it is clear that ambition in relation to carbon, uh, global greenhouse gas emissions need to be stepped up significantly. But we can't speak of NDC ambition being ramped up and leave behind a whole discussion of finance and the importance of scaling up finance. We have a $100 billion goal by 2020, which we know we probably will not be meeting but that does not stop us from pushing the momentum to ensure that we get as much as possible on the table um, by 2020 so that we can have that buoyancy in ambition that we need. And in addition to that, 
we have to recognize that there's some inevitable, irreparable harm that occurs because we've had such low ambition and that results in loss and damage for small island development states. And we cannot speak about loss and damage and divorce it from any discussion on how we treat with the finance aspects of loss and damage. So those are some key issues that we need to address. The NDCs, the scaling up of finance, and the inevitable irreparable harm and how we treat with that for SIDS, for small island development states. So I think the, the first question that we must ask is, are we going in the right direction? Uh, when we think about the conclusions of the latest uh, worldwide research in 2019, when we think about the conclusions uh, when it comes to the analysis and assessments on how countries are implementing their own domestic climate plans, when we think about um, the way in which all over the world, in Chile, in Asia, people are going to the streets because they feel that the leaders are not doing what they should to respond not only to the environmental concerns or climate concerns, but also to social concerns. From the three perspectives that I just presented, the picture is not good. So this COP25, it's not just about the negotiations that are happening inside, but it will be judged by its capacity to connect in the inside with it, the outside. And whatever comes out of this COP, at the end of the second week, needs to signal that something is shifting. Now, we can go into the details. Let me give you one. We're going into the 2020 period. In 2020, the UK is gonna be uh, chairing uh, the COP as president. And countries would need then to bring in new plans, new climate plans. That is a way to signal if countries here at this COP, they still have a week and a half to say how they intend to enhance their NDCs in a way that is ambitious enough so that we can close the emissions gap. That is the first thing. The second one is we need to get things straight in terms of the rules when implementing the Paris Agreement, when it comes to carbon markets, and when it, when it comes to the other rules that are being discussed. And the second one is that we need to address one of the biggest inequalities happening, which are the impacts of the climate crisis in developing countries when it comes to losses and damages. That needs to be sorted out this year. And that happens by acknowledging that just talking about it doesn't solve it. We need to address it with support, with financial support. I think each of us need to take action and mainly this is to demand governments to do more. So if we have an election coming up to make sure that we vote for parties that will take action, uh, even if we don't have an election, then to write to policymakers to express our views uh, because without that pressure the necessary changes won't be made. Uh, at an individual level, we can also take actions, for example, looking at ways to reduce our carbon footprint, be it changing our uh, driving habits or using public transport, uh, eating less meat. There are a range of things that we can do as individuals as we wait for policymakers to take action, but also to ensure that they take more action. Between now and Glasgow, to keep uh the Paris Agreement uh, on track. New updated NDCs must be submitted. This must include uh, high ambition levels, enhanced ambition, to be able to keep on the 1.5 degree pathways. This is in fact the scientific uh, finding that uh, if you are not able to bring about significant reductions, emission reductions, and make transformational changes, we will not be able to keep on 1.5 degree track. So that is very important. And the next important element is climate finance must be scaled up. Climate finance is required for implementation. Without climate finance, it is going to be difficult. LDCs alone need about almost $93.7 million, billion dollars a year. So the commitment made by the developed countries for $100 billion must be kept. The other is the loss and damage. 
That is another element that the LDCs feel is very important, uh, that the WIM review must be completed and it must result in support and action on the ground. That the WIM must uh, evolve into a mechanism that uh, is able to provide uh, funding, technology support to the LDCs. Because LDCs are increasingly facing uh, the impacts of climate change and suffering uh, huge damages as a result of that. Article 6 must be completed, the negotiation Article 6, because uh, Article 6 is the economic element for implementation of Paris Agreement and for enhancing ambition. The LDCs expect the, a share of the sale proceeds from uh, Article 6 to help the adaptation activities to, uh, to address the impacts of climate change. Article 6 uh, must re result in uh, reductions, real reductions, emission reductions on the ground and uh, it must uh, preserve environmental integrity.